Chapter 13, The Bleeding Television Screen The news of the bomb explosion was once again gaining an important place in the television news. More than half of the news bulletin was full of bomb explosions, screams, dead bodies, and bloodshed. Skyscrapers were raised to the ground. Human organs were being extracted separately from under the debris. People were stuck on the TV screen due to the shell of the bombs. Zishan felt that the whole television was bathed in human blood and now the blood would start falling out of the television set onto the carpet. Zishan's father had not come home yet, he thought many times to call father, but there was a ban on his speaking, he started waiting, I don't know why Mr. Aga was late. Finally, the call came from Mr. Aga's office. Aga will not come home today due to the explosion. They are on the spot and will go for an important meeting afterwards. Zishan was in a hurry to tell his father about the file as soon as possible so that he does not take any action while implementing the plan of the file and he himself gets into trouble. Zishan could not sleep the whole night in the presence of this problem. In the morning he got his eye somewhere. When Zishan's mother woke up at the time of morning prayer, she first asked if father had come, but her mother's answer was in the negative. Zishan prayed and prayed to Allah Almighty for his father. Allah knows everything. So he also knows how much I love my country. What I did was not anti-national. I thought that if Abu was killed, the saboteurs would be successful and if father was alive, they would surely punish the enemies of the country. Either Allah make these saboteurs fail. Allah save my country. Tears were flowing from his eyes, and he was prostrated. With the first rays of the sun, Zishan's mother was informed on the telephone that Mr. Aga has been arrested and sent to jail. Because he had handed over the copy of a very important file to international elements. Zishan's mother was overwhelmed with disbelief and despair, unable to fathom how Aga could ever betray his country. Tears streamed down her face as she questioned the possibility of such a betrayal. She was convinced that her husband would willingly sacrifice his life but could never stoop to betray his homeland. Meanwhile, Zishan, understanding the gravity of the situation, sought his mother's permission and rushed to the jail to meet his father. Upon introducing himself, he was swiftly led to his father's cell. Aga appeared worn and troubled, his eyes bearing the marks of sleepless nights. Zishan, initially discussing trivial matters, soon produced pen and paper to recount the entire sequence of events. He expressed his deep remorse for his actions and confessed his involvement in the recent developments. Aga reassured Zishan, urging him not to worry. He instructed him to return home and console his distraught mother. He emphasized the importance of Zishan remaining at home and avoiding any unnecessary risks. Aga had already spoken to his lawyer and believed he would secure his release on bail by evening. Before parting, Mr. Aga shared more about the unfolding plot. He revealed that Inspector Ahmed, who had recently been arrested, was connected to the saboteurs, either willingly or under coercion. Inspector Ahmed, aware that his secret had been compromised, conspired with the saboteurs. They fabricated a witness, along with a photocopy of a false file, falsely implicating Mr. Aga. This file contained his forged signature and differed from the file he had at home, where he had made personal notes and markings. Inspector Ahmed was part of the committee finalizing the grand plan, and before handing over the genuine file to Aga, he had created a photocopy with the forged signature. The photocopy was then switched with Mr. Aga's file. This deception had complicated matters, especially as Zishan had also copied the original file and provided it to the enemy.